It's important that each student wear appropriate safety equipment. Goggles must stay on during the entire experiment. Other students might splash chemicals or small things like iron filings, and if students are not wearing their goggles, their sight can be damaged. If your students have not done many experiments before, it's important to model exactly what you want them to do. Students may not know the appropriate way to handle glass, measure, pour water, or many other things you might assume they already know. As you do more experiments, your students will become much more independent. Students will probably surprise you with the applications they can think of for this sugar and yeast experiment. They gain so much more by causing the chemical reaction to happen and witnessing the results than if they had simply read about this phenomenon in a book. Because students deeply understand the material presented in this lesson about chemical reactions, they will be able to apply their knowledge better when questioned on a test. More importantly, they will be able to apply their knowledge in real life. Children who are visually, spatially, kinesthetically, linguistically, logically, and interpersonally intelligent will experience optimal learning environment during this experiment. Compare this broad range to reading a section of the science text aloud in class. In that case, only the visual and linguistic intelligences would be directly engaged. Students might even suggest ideas for similar experiments. Would anything change if salt were added to the yeast instead of sugar? Does it matter how much water you add? What if you use cold water? Asking students to record observations or draw scientific diagrams in their personal science journals gives them the opportunity to focus their thinking and demonstrate their actual comprehension. You might think that doing experiments like this one is too time consuming. However, this experiment, including the student's, the student's journal entry, took a total of 28 minutes.